pursuant to Florida Statute 355-199 regarding public transportation, the Florida Department of Transportation is conducting this public hearing regarding the State Road 19 milling, resurfacing, and access management project. There are three primary components to tonight's hearing. First, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or verbally to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which is intended to provide additional information regarding this project and marks the end of our informal question and answer period. Third, a formal comment period following this presentation. If you have any comments or concerns you would like to have included as part of the public record for this project, you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone. You may also provide your comments directly to the court reporter or in writing. Please either complete a speaker card if you wish to speak after the presentation or a comment form. If you wish to provide a written comment regarding this project, comment forms or speaker cards can be obtained at the front desk where additional assistance is available. Speaker cards will also be distributed as needed at the conclusion of this presentation. We ask that you limit your verbal comments to two minutes to allow time for everyone who would like to speak. The project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. In November 2010, Florida Senate Bill 1842 was enacted, which requires the department to hold a public hearing whenever access modifications are proposed along a state highway. The hearing shall be completed 180 days prior to finalization of the design of the project. This public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. This public hearing serves as an official forum, providing the opportunity to the public to express their opinions and concerns regarding the location, conceptual design, and potential social, economic, and environmental effects of the proposed improvements on the community. This presentation and any subsequent oral comments from you will be recorded and made into a verbatim transcript of these proceedings. All written and oral material will then become part of the public record for this project. Title VI was enacted as part of the Landmark Civil Rights Act of 1964. It prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status in programs and activities receiving federal financial assistance. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting either the Florida Department of Transportation, District 5 office, or the Tallahassee office. This contact information is also provided on a sign displayed near the sign-in table. For project information, please visit www.cflroads.com. This website was created by the Florida Department of Transportation to keep you and the public informed of ongoing and future projects. We encourage you to visit this website, which now contains hot links for easy access to online information and to stay current with the status of the State Road 19 milling and resurfacing and access management project. Go to the project website on www.cflroads.com. Enter the project number 441135-1 or 441135-2 
in the search box at the top right. Then click on Go. The limits of this project are along State Road 19 from south of County Road 452 to Golden Gem Drive in Lake County. The proposed improvements for this project consist of milling and resurfacing the southbound only travel lanes, paved shoulders, and median crossovers, installing sidewalk along both sides of State Road 19, where sidewalk currently does not exist and right-of-way allows, coordinating with Lake Express on bus stop sidewalk connections, installing intersection pedestrian lighting at County Road 452 and County Road 44, installing corridor lighting from County Road 452 to Pine Meadows Golf Course, upgrading sidewalk ramps to meet Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA requirements, miscellaneous drainage improvements, and installing audible pavement markings. What is access management? Access management is the careful planning of the location, design, and operation of driveways, median openings, intersections, and street connections. The purpose of access management is to provide access in a manner that preserves the safety and efficiency of the transportation system. Good access management practices strive to separate conflict points by providing a reasonable distance between driveways and between median openings. This brings us to another question. What are conflict points? Conflict points are locations along a roadway where the paths of two vehicles can legally cross. Each conflict point is a location where a crash can occur. At a four-way intersection, there are as many as 36 conflict points. This diagram represents the 18 major conflict points. Major conflict points are defined as angle, left turn, and U-turn conflict points. One scenario is a vehicle attempting to make a U-turn. That vehicle can cross paths with another vehicle, making a left turn from the side street and it can also cross paths with a vehicle traveling straight in the opposing direction. So that situation has two conflict points. A basic principle of access management is to limit the number of conflict points along a roadway by limiting the number of driveways and median openings and restricting certain movements at other median openings. Conflict points decrease as a median opening becomes more restricted through access management. A full median opening with 18 major conflict points is reduced to four conflict points when it is changed to a directional median opening. Vehicles can only turn left or make a U-turn in both directions, and vehicles on side roads cannot turn left. At a left-in median opening, where vehicles can only turn left or make a U-turn in one direction at the median, you reduce the conflict points from 18 to 2. When the median opening is closed, there are no major conflict points. Not all crashes are correctable by access management. Collisions that could be corrected by modifying the existing raised median were the focus of this project. The illustration shows an accident that could have been prevented by closing the median or providing a barrier where the westbound automobile is trying to turn into or cross the eastbound travel lane. You may have more questions about access management. The Florida Department of Transportation has produced an access management brochure, of which we have a few copies here today that you can take with you. It is written in a format where the commonly asked questions are answered and are easy to understand. The brochure can also be downloaded off the internet on the CFL Roads website. 
State Road 19 has an access classification 3. Class 3 is for a high capacity or principal arterial road in a natural area. For Chapter 1497 of the Florida Administrative Code, full median openings are to be spaced one half mile or 2,640 feet apart, and directional median openings are spaced one fourth mile or 1,320 feet apart. Median openings should not be placed close to signalized intersections. Now we will discuss further the changes that are being proposed on State Road 19 and the locations where the changes are being proposed. The first is a two-way directional median, a median that allows left turns and U-turns in both directions from the median but does not allow left turns from the side roads. With a two-way directional median, the major conflict points are reduced from 18 to 4. This type of opening will stop vehicles from crossing six lanes of traffic. The second is a one-way directional median, a median that will allow a left turn and U-turn in one direction only from the median but does not allow left turns from the side roads. With a one-way directional median, the major conflict points are reduced from 18 to 2. This type of opening will again stop vehicles from crossing six lanes of traffic. The last is a closed median, a median that does not allow any turning movements or crossing of traffic. With a closed median, the major conflict points are reduced from 18 to 0. Left turns are not allowed from the median or from the side roads. Closed medians require vehicles to use adjacent intersections for U-turn movements. The next few slides show graphical representations of the display board from south of County Road 452 to Golden Gem Drive. The existing signal at County Road 452 will be maintained. A northbound and southbound directional median opening is proposed between Country Club Boulevard and County Road 452 and at Country Club Boulevard. New sidewalk is proposed along the west side of the road from south of County Road 452 and continues north of Country Club Boulevard. The existing signal at County Road 44 will be maintained. A northbound and southbound directional median opening is proposed at Hasselton Road and Pine Meadows Golf Course Road. The full median opening at County Road 19A will be maintained. New sidewalk is proposed along the east side of the road from County Road 44 continuing north past Pine Meadows Golf Course Road. New sidewalk is also proposed on the west side of the road from the existing sidewalk at Burrell Road and continues north of County Road 19A. A northbound and southbound directional median opening is proposed at McKinley Road, Orange Avenue, and 3rd Street. A northbound directional median opening is proposed at 2nd Street. The full median opening at Whistling Pines Road will be maintained. New sidewalk is proposed on both sides of the roadway throughout this segment. A southbound directional median opening is proposed at the Lakeside RV Park. A northbound and southbound directional median opening is proposed at Lake Smith Road. The full median opening at the Forest Gate Recycling Phillips Manufacturing Driveway will be maintained. New sidewalk is proposed along the east side of the road within this segment. The proposed sidewalk along the west side of the road ends just north of Whistling Pines Road. 
a northbound and southbound directional median opening is proposed at Mills Street. The full median openings at Florida's Natural Growers, County Road 450A, and Golden Gem Drive will be maintained. New sidewalk is proposed along the east side of the road and continues to the end project limit at Golden Gem Drive, where it will connect to the existing sidewalk. The proposed lane configuration along State Road 19 will maintain the existing two 12-foot wide travel lanes and a 5-foot wide outside paved shoulder in each direction separated by a 40-foot wide grass median. Drainage ditch regrading will occur along both sides of State Road 19 at locations where new sidewalk is installed. This project is designed to be beneficial to bicycle and pedestrian users. The existing paved shoulders will be maintained. Five foot wide sidewalks will be installed on both sides of State Road 19, where sidewalk does not currently exist and where right of way allows. Pedestrian signals and a crosswalk will be added along the west leg of the County Road 452 signalized intersection. Pedestrian signal improvements will be included at County Road 44. Sidewalk ramp improvements at the County Road 44 signalized intersection will be completed to meet Americans with Disabilities Act requirements. The project team will coordinate with Lake Express to provide connections to the existing bus stops from the proposed sidewalk. The drainage improvements will maintain the current drainage patterns. Existing side drains and mitered end sections will be extended or replaced at various locations to accommodate bus stop improvements, ADA sidewalk ramp improvements, and new sidewalk installations. Drainage pipes and inlets will be added as required to accommodate access management improvements. The design cost related to this project is $1.4 million. Design is currently ongoing and is expected to be completed in July 2020. All improvements will take place within the existing FDOT right-of-way. The current construction cost estimate is $5.5 million, and the estimated construction start date is spring 2021. Thank you for your interest in this project and for taking time to attend this public hearing. Anyone desiring to make a statement or present written views and or exhibits regarding the location, conceptual design, social, economic, and environmental effects of the improvements will now have an opportunity to do so. We will now call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. If you have not filled out a speaker card but wish to speak, please hold up your hand and a member of the project team will bring one to you. If you prefer, you may submit your verbal comments directly to the court reporter. When your name is called, please come forward, then state your name and address into the microphone. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We encourage you to share your comments with us. There are four different ways you can submit your comments in addition to speaking at the microphone or providing your verbal comments directly to the court reporter. Fill out a comment form and drop it in the comments box at the comments table. Take a comment form with you and mail it to the address shown on the form before September 20th, 2019. Email your comments to the FDOT project manager, Heidi Trivet, heidi.trivet at dot.state.fl.us. 
use the Ask a Question button on the www.cflroads.com website. Under the Project Manager's contact information for this project, all comments received or postmarked by September 20, 2019 will become part of the official public record for this public hearing. We will now call upon those who have turned in speaker cards. When you come forward, please state your name and address for the court reporter. If you represent an organization, municipality, or other public body, please provide that information as well. We ask that you limit your comments to two minutes. If you have additional comments, you may continue after other people have had an opportunity to speak. Again, the project team will not be answering questions during this portion of the public hearing. Members of the project team will be available after the formal comment period to answer your questions on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Please come forward to the microphone and state your name and address before you begin, so the court reporter will be able to get a complete record of your comments. 